Hello and welcome to Gradient's weekly roundup of key news and activities in the FNCG industry in Sri Lanka for the week ending 6 December 2021. Here are this week's main stories. Chemical fertilizer ban ends, government support only for organic farmers. 20,000 metric tons of rice to be imported to stabilize supplies and keep prices in check. Food inflation rise 17.5% in November. Tea production in tepid growth in October. We will also look at the movement of key FNCD industry statistics and indicators and wrap up with notable corporate news that made it across to our news desk. In the main story this week, the import ban on chemical fertilizer was lifted with effect from November 30th, 2021. The ban, initially imposed on 6th of May this year, was claimed to reduce ill effects of chemical fertilizers on the farming community. However, the need to reduce foreign exchange outflows in the post-COVID environment was also speculated to be a concern. According to Mahindananda Aludgamage, Minister of Agriculture, the private sector will be allowed to import chemical fertilizer, fungicides, pesticides and weedicides. However, he noted that the government subsidies, seeds, guaranteed price for paddy, technology and market are only provided for green agriculture. This decision ended months of uncertainty with nearly 30% of harvest lost due to the sole use of organic fertilizer. On a related note, cabinet approval was given to purchase machinery for the two eco-friendly bio-organic fertilizer plants proposed to be constructed at the Palavatta and Sevenagala units of Lanka Sugar Company. The Sri Lankan cabinet has given approval to the State Trading Corporation to import 20,000 tonnes of rice from Myanmar via the G2G deal at 460 US dollars per tonne. According to Cabinet Co spokesperson Dr. Ramesh Patirana, the imported rice will be distributed through Lanka Satosa and the cooperative movement across the country at 98 rupees per kilo. Since June, rice was imported on four occasions, while the maximum retail price was removed during this time period. In November, the government reduced a special commodity levy of 65 rupees per kilo of imported rice to 25 cents for six months. Sri Lanka's annual rice consumption is around 2.2 million tonnes and the paddy harvest for the 2020-2021 maha season and the 2021 yala season is around 4.8 million. The government called for expressions of interest from investors at a minimum investment of 500 million rupees to develop and operate new rice mills. This stems from a cabinet initiative to build five rice mills in Kurunagala, Anuradhapura, Batiklo, Hambantuta and Ampara districts under a public-private partnership. Food inflation rose 17.5% year-on-year in November with the relaxation of the minimum maximum retail price on many essential items. The minimum price of a 450 gram loaf of bread was increased to 10 rupees, with the All Ceylon Bakery Owners Association stating the new price should be at least at 100 rupees. This increase was attributed to the rise in wheat flour prices from 8 to 10 rupees in October. Moreover, All Island Canteen Owners Association increased the price of a vegetable lunch to 160 rupees, a fish lunch packet to 200 rupees, and a chicken lunch packet to 250 rupees. Asela Sampath, head of All Island Canteen Owners Association, noted if prices are not increased, the industry will face a downfall with hotels being compelled to close down. The price of a cup of plain tea was also increased by 5 rupees due to the increase in the price of cooking gas. According to the Sri Lanka Tea Board, tea production in October 2021 was recorded at 23.9 million kilos, slightly above 23.8 million recorded a year earlier. Cumulatively, during the January to October period, tea production reached 258.6 million kilos, up 15% year-on-year, a significant rise given the fertilizer issues faced by the industry. Category-wise in October, production of orthodox tea, which accounts for 90% of total tea production in Sri Lanka, was down 1.4% year-on-year, while category CTC and green grew 24% and 9% year-on-year respectively. And now let's take a look at the movement of key industry statistics and indicators. The manufacturing PMI reached a seven-month high in October, reaching 60.4, led by increased new orders and production pertaining to food and beverage and textile sectors, in indicating a revival in the country's manufacturing activities. 
Many respondents from the FNB manufacturing sector mentioned that they secured more local orders in October, targeting demand in the upcoming festive season. However, as such new orders drove stock prices higher, some FNB sector respondents stated that they increased purchases on the account of supply side concerns. The services PMI increased to 57.9 in October, driven by improved levels of business activity, particularly related to financial services, transportation, education and wholesale and retail trade. In more developments this week, according to the Sri Lanka Export Development Board, food and beverage exports in October fell to 247 million US dollars, down 3.3% year on year. Share of FNB exports of Sri Lanka's total exports fell to 2.5% in October from 2.6% a year earlier, still significantly down from 3% recorded in October 2011. And now let's take a look at the weekly movement of key FMCD sub indices at the Colombo Stock Exchange. And here's how the rupee performed against the dollar this week. In corporate news this week, Ceylon Biscuits Limited, one of Sri Lanka's key food manufacturing conglomerates, announced entry into the local spice market with an investment of a billion rupees in a new facility. The new venture, Sarah Spices, it will be manufactured and distributed by Convenience Foods Lanka PLC, a subsidiary of the CBL Group under the culinary brand Sera. HBF Foods, a tea exporter, is to raise 249 million rupees via a rights issue to reduce debt and improve negative equity position. The offer is three new shares for every four held at five rupees per share. The move will entail the issuance of 49.8 million shares. George Stewart and Company owns a 51% stake in the company. The Lanka Coffee Association was launched under the Sri Lanka Agripreneurs Forum to represent the collective interests of all stakeholders working towards developing Sri Lanka's coffee industry. The initiative was supported by the Market Development Facility, Australia's private sector development program. According to Rino Shnazar, chairperson of the Lanka Coffee Association, the goal is to work towards in a strategic manner to elevate the Sri Lankan coffee industry and well, as well as to provide a common platform to voice the industry's concerns to the government. And that's a wrap for this week. Don't forget to check out our weekly business roundup published each Friday at 7.30am. Until we see you next time, stay safe.